All I'm saying is, Drake, be careful because Papa's house. Aubrey Drake Graham. He's a superstar. He's an icon. He's a idiot. Can't say we approve of that. Who is this guy? An Uber driver went absolutely ballistic on Drake and his driver. So Drake was arriving at Delilah in uh, West Hollywood. All of a sudden, you just hear a guy yell, idiot. Hey, Drake, you a lame, homie. Take that body, you fam. And your headphones ain't even plugged in. Stop the cat. Hey Drake, you a lame homie. Take that bodies, you fam. And your headphones ain't even plugged in. Stop the cat. People are now calling Drake out on the streets after Kendrick Lamar has exposed his darkest secrets. One of which is him being caught on tape, fondling and kissing an underage girl. This is not the only instance of him publicly kissing young women. He has also made some very questionable moves on another girl in Dallas in 2010. Footage like this, resurfacing has also increased speculation and inquiries into his relationship with Millie Bobby Brown when she was underage. Watch for yourself. We text and we talk and he says that I miss you so much and I tell him I miss him yeah. and I imagine him, him, him at home being like, no, shut up, <laughs> you know, stop. <laughs> um, and there's another one where she's like, so, I met him at a hotel, and then we went out for dinner, and then we were hanging out every night for three days, and now we text each other all the time, and we love each other, and I'm just like, whoa! <laughs> and he's, he's just, giving her advice on, like, boys and dating. Yeah. And, and he's just got to be at home being like, God, no. All I'm saying is, Drake, be careful, because Papa's house it's not safe. does not, we don't need another... <laughs> We didn't Welcome we, to Papa's house. Papa's house. Don't need another uh, inmate. So here, let's watch some of these videos. This is the first video that came out of her talking about him. Let me throw this up. He's my adult. This is um, a little excerpt of the video for you. Crush. He's not my crush. Okay. Let me get this straight. He's like a brother. He's okay. a brother. I met Drake in an Australian hotel. I was touring, and he was touring too. And he, honestly, his manager just came up to my dad and said, Drake loves the show, come to his show tonight. And I was like, oh my goodness. And my dad, honestly, he was on T-Mobile, he was on the phone to T-Mobile trying to get us Wi-Fi for um, Australia. He was like, I don't know who Drake is. And I was like, are you joking me? Drake? He wants to see me? And I was like, okay, we're going. So I like got my outfit prepared and went there and, and he was such a fanboy and I was such a fangirl. This has been further brought into the spotlight by the fact that Drake name dropped her on the Heart Part 6, despite Kendrick never even talking about her at all. Many have seen it as a tactical masterclass from Kendrick, since it seems like Drake just keeps digging his own grave. TK Kirkland certainly thinks there was a clear winner in this beef, especially with how Drake's parenting was called out. To everybody's listening, I would never say go listen to somebody getting dissed, but the Kendrick Lamar diss. Is, 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 forget that it's about Drake. Listen to the music, listen to the, the words, and how they arrange that, that song is amazing if you're a music enthusiast. Well, yeah, Kendrick said, uh, y'all think all my life is rap? That's hope.
got a son to raise, but I can see you don't know nothing about that. And, you know, Drake has a son, but he's not with the mother. Yeah. So he has shared custody, and of yeah. course he raised the son and takes him to games yeah, and makes yeah. videos with him but ultimately he doesn't live with his son yes his son lives with his baby his mother, mother right, and right. he even said in one of his songs that he only knew her like two times when she got pregnant or something right like right right whereas you know Kendrick is married I believe right lives with his kids mm -hmm. and I mean, he got of got him on, the, on that side. You know, yeah. I mean, what are you going to say? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm a better father than you, Kendrick. Right, well, right, no, right. You can't quite say that. Right. You know, no right. offense to all the, you know, the single dads and stuff like right. that, but it's not the same as living with your kids. Yeah, totally different. It's you a know, big difference. You can't, you can't respond to that right. with something slick. Yeah, you don't know you gotta nothing hold about that. that. That's you got to hold that. The way he said when I was sitting here listening with you. Uh-huh. Wow. Once it's out there... It'll never be the same. I don't know if you heard, but at one point, there was an old video that circulated where Drake is talking about this other Canadian rapper. I think Cardinal Official that he was beefing with. Right. And when he was referring to him using the N-word, it was like the hard R. Okay. It was You could tell he wasn't comfortable saying that word. Yes, yes. And you know, you gotta, I mean, but then again, you gotta look at Drake was raised with a Jewish mom. Yes. In a Jewish neighborhood in mm -hmm. Toronto. Right. You know, he had bar mitzvahs. He sure you did. You know, he, he had Friday night Sabbath. He was uh, essentially raised as a white Jewish kid. Mm -hmm. And later on, I think he got more kind of comfortable with his black side and stuff like right. that. He also went on to talk about how Drake got Jaw Rule. The thing that I'm listening to you saying and thinking about what's going on, will it have the same effect of what 50 Cent did to Jaw Rule? Well, and I was going to mention that. I think what 50 did to Ja Rule was kind of play with his head and make him think that what Ja Rule had been winning with, he suddenly needs to switch up. Because we don't, we didn't love Ja Rule for his like gangster songs. So true. We loved him for uh, I'm always there when you call. Yes. I'm always Excellent. on time. Like, like, you know, songs like that. Yeah. You know, like, Love songs. Love songs. Girl songs. Right. Like, people loved him for that. He went multi-platinum, not for Holla Holla. Right, sure did. For the, for the songs of Ashanti, yes. he, went, he went platinum yes. with. Yes. Multi-platinum with. But suddenly, 50 Cent starts getting his head to make him think, oh, I got to do clap back. You know, and, and uh, a New York anthem. I yes. got to do this. Meanwhile, 50 is doing 21 questions. Basically doing what Ja Rule's winning with. Yeah, sure was. You know, and sure uh, and Ja Rule never got back in that flow of what made him hot. So true. Because after that, it was sort of like he kind of stopped putting out music. And now if I was Ja Rule, I'd be like, I have to drop another girl anthem. Watch this. Watch me go triple platinum. So true. So I'm true. not going to sit there and play in the mud with you. Right. So with Drake, if Drake starts doing all this tough guy music, then Kendrick would have won. Okay. Because, you know, when you look at Drake's biggest songs, the song's like God's plan. Right. Nothing tough, nothing gangster. Yeah. I've right. met Drake a couple times. Yeah. I didn't get a tough guy. No, he's a, he's, he's a tall guy. He's about 6'2". He's like he's my a, height. He's a nice kid. Yeah. Listen, I've seen a nice kid to even go this route. That's what I'm saying to the young people. Listen, I've learned the hard way. Never let nobody bring you down off your level you have to come down no matter how bad it seems dj academics however believes that drake is definitely better than kendrick kendrick well, well okay so to pimp a butterfly first week sold 324,000. okay that's a big number what, and, and that what, same year what did drake drop what, what year is that is it 14 uh, 15 15. okay hold on let's see drake album you might have to go to 16 where he drops views Views obliterate that. Okay, uh, if you're reading this, it's too late. That's, that's a little tape. bit of a... That's a mixtape. It's a mixtape. Go to Views, Views obliter obliterates everything. Hold he on. does a Drake, mill. Drake, Views, first. I'll save you the suspense, he does a mill. Okay, you're right. <laughs> views... Obliterates. Obliterates to pimp a butterfly. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're right. I see where you're going with it. Okay, go ahead. So, again, all right, so now we're at a point where 
Kendrick is at his, that's the most he ever sold at 2017 when he drops the band. What happens though, and I think behind the scenes, we never really know, we knew what happened, but Kendrick just disappears. He kind of just falls back. Yeah, damn did 353,000. About the same as to Pippa Butterfly. No, I thought he did more than, I thought he did like six something. Oh, no, I'm looking at it right now. His first week, 340 million streams. The second week, it remained at the top 10 and did another 238. So yeah, it did 353,000 the first week, the second week it did 238. Um, so, I mean, look, a lot of people consider that to be either his best or his second best album next to Good Kid, Mad City. I thought yeah. it was a great album. It, it was his most commercial album, too. Yes. Who, who, it had Rihanna on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what happened then, um, Kendrick goes ghost. He literally years. fell off the map. Yeah. I went to Drake's concert last night. Okay. okay. And when I told you, I, I went to Travis' concert, concert like about three weeks ago. Man, it's 80% girls in there, man. Like, there, there's, it's, it's, it's more girls at that like, than at like Nicki Minaj's concert. It's all women, bro. Hmm. So I get you what you're thinking, no. But I'm coming from a male perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, when you go there, it's like a huge, there's old, young, People in wheelchair. Yo, Drake gave out 20,000 to a woman that had a sign that said, I just got diagnosed with dementia. No huh. joke. No joke. Somebody's wow. here. Look. He has old, young, majority women that are throwing bras, panties, anything at this guy. He's a, that's not Kendrick. I've been to Kendrick show. So. Do you agree with that assessment? Because most of the internet doesn't. He addressed Kendrick on push-ups and uh, the fact that he uh, additionally baited a response out of Kendrick with Taylor Made. A response, a diss, a track is clearly what Drake wanted. He has the diss now on his plate and he has to eat it. He cannot do another uh, push a T. PR statement, we're ending the beef, Jay Prince is stepping in to close it all off again. This is not 2018, he has to finish what has been started, and from here we will see how that goes. But uh, as of right now, I think Kendrick is coming out on top. Because regardless of how much you like this track, or uh, how you feel like it fits in the uh, greater scheme of diss songs of all time, Drake has not come through with a superior cut so far. And if he takes down Kendrick from here, lines about his height and his shoe size and uh, how rarely he drops music are not gonna cut it. He's gotta go further and I guess from here we will see if he can. I feel Kendrick uh, still, um... He knows what the struggle is. You know, sometimes when you uh, aren't in the struggle, you kind of get sidetracked to, to think that everything is just song and dance and, you know, the world is a motherfucking big motherfucking piece of gold and shit and you can do whatever. In actuality, it's not. You get me? So I have to go with Kendrick on it. You could, not saying that Drake, you know, hasn't had his motherfucking moments, uh, cause he has. The boy can really, uh, when he want to get, you know, funny with you and 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 hit home and get personal, uh, he has. We've seen that without his career as far as his um, lyrical confrontations go. Uh, but you know, you're stepping into a different realm. You got competition. Put it like that. How would you compare this beef to your beef with DJ Quick? Um, I don't think, I mean, as far as lyricism, uh, as far as making records, man, they right there. Uh, I ain't gonna put it past the homie Kendrick because like I said, he walked some of the same streets I walked. I don't know where Drake, I don't know where Drake is from. You know, he's from Canada. I don't know the scene in Canada. I don't know how he grew up, if he grew up underprivileged in the projects, starving, you know, having to sell dope and carry straps and claim a neighborhood. You feel me? Because a few, the protection and the unity, I don't know his walk of life. Kendrick came from that. During their initial high profile musical feud, Kendrick Lamar leveled several serious claims against Drake. In his triumph song, Not Like Us, Lamar renews accusations of Drake's cultural identity and supposed inauthentic ties with other musicians. For years, Drake has been accused of cozying up to rappers 
and mimicking their sound and style for personal gain before moving on to his next project. Rappers, such as Earl Sweatshirt, Rick Ross, and Pusha T, have discussed the alleged pattern, and claims that Drake is a culture vulture have circulated for at least a decade. The majority of the complaints revolve around the use of false accents, musical similarities and covers, appearances with emerging musicians, and unverified claims of stealing. When Drake launched his 2015 smash, Hotline Bling, on his Beats One radio show, OVO Sound, it was initially marketed as a cha-cha remix, referencing to Virginia singer Dram's previous growing success. However, as time passed, Drake separated Hotline Bling from the song due to suspicions that he effectively copied it. Dram has been public about his position, writing in a post on X last fall, Yeah, I feel I got jacked for my record, but I'm good. Drake informed the fader in 2015 that Hotline Bling borrows Timmy Thomas's 70s classic, Why Can't We Live Together? He attributed the parallels between Hotline Bling and Cha Cha to the musician's use of a similar rhythm which is a sound or riff that serves as an anchor for Jamaican music. Imagine that in rap, or imagine that in R&B, Drake said. Sometimes I'll pick a beat that's a bit, like, sunnier, I guess is the word you used than usual, and I just try my hand at it. And that's kind of what Hotline Bling was. And I loved it. It's cool. I've been excited by that sort of creative process. Gabe Niles, who produced Cha Cha, has stated that the song does not sample Thomas's track. Drake has faced similar difficulties throughout his career, and Lamar's allegations are only the latest in a long line of claims that Drake's industry tactics are exploitative. However, Drake's supporters argue that the issue is not one of exploiting black cultures and artists, but rather of race. Social media responses regarding Lamar's lyrics rapidly turned into discussions about racism in hip-hop and the rap industry. Drake's supporters have long argued that his mixed status he is both black and white, combined with his Canadian citizenship, harms his stature in the business. Amara Pope investigated Drake's ethnic and racial identities and branding, as well as her 2023 PhD dissertation, Canadians Redefining R&B. She claimed Drake's position in the industry is influenced by both his color and nationality. I think that people have questions about Drake's authenticity when it comes to his blackness, based on not necessarily what Graham has done, Pope said, referring to his real name, Aubrey Graham. But the dominant belief that Canadians are exclusively white and that Canadian music exclusively folk or country and R and B and hip hop is exclusively created for black Americans. Pope said that Drake's music reflects his multiracial Canadian and Jewish heritage. Drake, for a long time, has talked about not being black enough to be in hip hop music, stated Pope. Do you think Drake has a point? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.